I am so glad you're here for this Sister to Sister. It's going to be a good show. We're talking about what do you do if someone is discouraged. Now, you're not discouraged. Well, not right now. But what do we do when God does not give us the desires of our heart? Oh, we're going to find out what the sisters think about that. So stay with us. <laughs> Well, hello and welcome to Sister to Sister. This is going to be a great show because the questions that we have and that we're going to answer are things that come from your heart and you want to know. And we're going to tell you what we think about it. And this first one is, I know that this is something that all of you fight sometimes. I know I do, sometimes. And Roxanne said in the open, she wasn't discouraged right now, but I want to find out how you fight this. So how do you fight discouragement in life? It hits all of us at some times. Sydney, you seem like yeah. too peppy to ever be discouraged. <laughs> well, that is not true. Like I do face discouragement <laughs> like all of us. We all go through storms and trials and tribulations. And I feel especially being in ministry, like warfare, sometimes I feel like there's like a target on your back. And so the way that I have just learned in my life or when I'm walk walking through really hard things to fight discouragement is honestly to go in the secret place. I get on my hands and knees and I just worship God. Mm -hmm. And I just lift my hands high and I'm like, no matter what the circumstance looks like, no matter what I'm going through, I'm like, God, I'm going to pray you. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to stand on your word. I'm going to stand on your promises. And I'm going to contend and fight and believe because you're a God that you don't lie. That's so, right. um, and you're not a salmon that you shall repent. So I just really stand on that. So I just encourage people, go into the secret place, press in, read the scriptures. If any prophetic words have been spoken over your life, just like say it over and over again. Because sometimes I think when you usher into the presence of the Lord, like in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. So that's where I get filled back up and you can cry out like, ah, oh, Jesus. But I just love running into the arms of my father. Well, I forgot to say at the beginning of the show, we are sister to sister, and we're really excited that Sydney Goldman is here with us at the table. She's sitting at the table with us. Flo is out today. So I jumped in to ask you a question because I'm so excited to have you here. So welcome. And I asked you first so that you could get in. Jump in because there. Because yeah. we are a little bit, you know. A little bit. Uh, you know, I recently went through uh, some discouragement, and I, I, it's funny, who would turn to the book of Hosea? You know, what's in Hosea? She was a prostitute. He was a prophet. She was a prostitute. And I read this scripture that in the uh, valley of trouble, there's a door of hope. Yeah. And so I said, okay, Lord, I'm in the valley of trouble. Just make the door of hope. And it said, and I will give a song. I couldn't sing. I could not even sing. I could not even praise. I couldn't. It was just so overwhelming. And I turned to this scripture, this song that I think Don Moen sings, He Will Be My Song. Mm -hmm. And I played that and I said, Yes, Lord, you, when I can't sing, you are singing songs over me. Did the discouragement leave quickly? No. But I learned, a, Sydney said, Press. Press, there's a door of hope. Start walking through that door of hope. Wow. wow. So yeah. Hosea, I wouldn't really think to go there. It's I know. one well, of my favorite books in the Bible. Wow. I love Hosea. It's such a great story. Well, I you... was just reading that entire book of Hosea, like <gasps> just so the other day. And cool. at the very end, it says that God will cause the wayward one to come home and mm -hmm. he will love them like unconditionally. And I just, wow. it's a beautiful book yes. and a beautiful story. Um, I thought about one of like my most discouraging moments, maybe eight or nine years ago where like no hope in sight, everything, got, it felt like, or maybe 10 years ago now, time is passing. It felt like there was just, it just was so dark. <clears throat> and my bottom baseline is this, God loves me. So if he loves me, there's nothing to fear. And then like, not only does he love me, but I'm his favorite. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then not only that, but somehow, according to Romans, he's gonna work this out for my good, Amen. for those who are called according to his purpose. So it, it, your bottom line has to be, he loves me and he's got a plan for me 
through this and you have to trust that. You have to trust him. Right, mm -hmm. right. It's, you know, it brings me to tears as I hear my sisters, all of you, all of you and all of you, we've all been to discouragement and our hope is in the word of God. I want you to know that. I think of the scripture, John 14, 1, let not your hearts be troubled, yes. believe in me, Bel believe in God, Be believe also in me. Yeah. And I think that we have to lean not on what we're feeling, mm -hmm. lean on what we know to be the truth, mm -hmm. is what you said, that God loves me. Because yes. I think in those times of discouragement, it's so easy to fall into what we're feeling and when the yes. lies that we're being told yes. and the things that we, we're we thinking that is the truth, but we have to believe in what we know to be the truth. Yes. And that's what we have to do. Yes. We have to fight against the discouragement, not linger yes. in the, the feelings that we have, but to fight against it. We're called to fight against discouragement because it's very easy to just mm -hmm fall into that and to cave into that. We are called to fight against discouragement. It's very easy to just sit back and to fall into that and to seek comfort in things and, and to seek comfort in that, in those feelings of discouragement. And, and we can fall very deep into those dark feelings of discouragement mm -hmm. yep. and find comfort almost in those feelings of discouragement. Oh my gosh, and isn't darkness. that truth? Is it Corey, yes. that's wild you said that. You find comfort in being down in this yes. pit. Because you're going, okay, I'm just going to be in the pit. And it's all of you, I'm in the true. pit. It's very wow. true. People find yes. comfort in those, those feelings of discouragement. We are called to fight against that. And we are given the very tools in scripture yes. to fight against that. And right. so we're called to do that as Christians. And we're called as Christians to help our fellow yes. Christians to fight yes. against that. Yes. So mm -hmm. we need to help our fellow yes. Christians to pull them out of that pit oh, wow. and to say to them, I am going to encourage you, brother, sister. Yeah. Right. I right. am going to help right. sharpen you. Iron sharpens iron. Right. Just real right. quick, if we follow the trail of discouragement, what does that lead to? Depression? That's right. What does mm -hmm. depression lead to? Medication? Numbing? Uh, problems, where does the, the ultimate is like suicide. Like yes. uh, the devil wants to take you out and right. suicide or discouragement could just be the very beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Don't give it place. Yeah. Don't, don't look mm -hmm. down. Don't look down at that mm -hmm. precipice that goes right. down. Right. And I have two um, grandmas that have gone on to be with the Lord. They said, this too shall pass, right. better days ahead. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Yeah. This is a great question. We could do a whole show on this, but I want to know sometimes when you're in that place. Why is it hard to pray? Why? Why? I think we overcomplicate it. Uh, I think mm -hmm. that we think there's a certain vocabulary we have to use mm -hmm. or there's certain scriptures we have to pray or we have to use a certain order. You know what? Talk to God. Right. Talk to a friend. And this is the best friend you could possibly have because there's nothing you can say to God he doesn't already know. And there's nothing you can say to God that he's going to turn his back on you. Yes. There's nothing you can say to God that he's going to say, God, he's not going to say, I don't love you anymore. Mm -hmm. There's nothing you can Amen. say that he's going to turn away. He's going to say, I love you. Yes. Right. I am here for you. Say it to him. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It doesn't have to be a major thing. Yeah. I talk to God every single day. It's usually because I lost my keys or mm -hmm. I lost my glasses or yes. I lost something. Please, yes. God, help me find this. Or please help me to not yell at my children yeah. or please yes. help me to deal with this situation. <laughs> I talk to God every single day and every little thing. And it's so comforting and it's so wonderful. Yeah. Just talk to God. Right. It's yeah. the greatest gift he's given us besides our salvation right. that he is right there That's to talk right. oh, to. Oh, I love it, Locks. Love it, love it. I think sometimes it's so hard to pray, you know, the makeup bars like um, Miss Linda that does our beautiful faces. Yes. As she said, it's distractions. And I think sometimes there's yes. things going on in life that you don't make time to like sit down and be intentional and spend time with him and be in that secret place and to pray. And I know for me sometimes when I'm going through a rough time or a trial, sometimes I'm just like, I have nothing to say. And I'll just <laughs> like, I like, I just like, I'll just sit there and be like, yeah. okay, Jesus. And I'll be like, you know, be still and know that I am God. Or I'll just yeah. meditate or like pray my prayer link or just, just something little. And I notice when I just take that first step, yeah. then he just starts like wooing me to like draw closer to him. And I but know first that you said, I have nothing. Yeah, sometimes I'm like, Jesus, like I, I sometimes I'll be 
like, look, I'm really mad right now about this. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. But, um, you know, I just always just try to like just press it. And I love and like, I love reading the book of Psalms and all like, yes. they're just like prayers unto yes. God. And I'll just read and like, I love that even like, it says like when I'm distressed and I call on to you, hear me. Like we serve a God that hears that's us. That's right, that's Corey. That yeah. he catches, even there's right. another Psalm that like the tears, he catches our tears in a bottle. Yeah, so when yeah, I'm like feeling yeah. that discouragement, I know wow. that we serve a God that listens and that he responds and he speaks and he talks to oh, us. Oh, I hope you're catching this. Roxanne, why is it hard to pray? Oh my goodness, we're so hurt. We're so discouraged. We don't know what to pray. Off the, even Romans 8 says, we don't know what to pray, but Jesus is always interceding for us. So when I don't know what to pray, because I don't know what the will of God is in a situation, I do pray scripture. A lot of the Psalms, a lot of the scriptures, I will just repeat them back. What did Jesus pray mm -hmm. when he was fighting Satan? He said, it is written. So I just pray back the scriptures to God and sit back and listen because we know he hears us. Yes. Even though he might, he won't feel he answers or gives the right answer, we know he hears. So I often pray the scriptures. Right, Amy, why? I just think people are sometimes illusion to what prayer is and they think it's some long, I, I need to spend two hours a day on my face before the presence of God talk. And, and it's really not. It's as you're going, as you're getting up, as you're getting in your car, as you're dropping your kids off at the ball game, Jesus help Gabe kick the football the furthest it's ever gone down the field. <laughs> and it ended up in the end zone every single kickoff. I mean, I'm like, thank you, Jesus. But here's what I would encourage. If you really feel stuck in your prayer, start with thank you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We enter his courts and his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Thank you, Lord, for my kids. Thank you for health. Thank you yes. for more than enough. Thank you for life. Just thank him, thank him, thank him. Talk to him about whatever's weighing on your mind and that's how you go. Yeah, and I say thank you for being with us here at Sister to Sister. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back. We're so happy that you're with us because we have great questions for you and answers come right from our heart. And this question, huh, this one hits all of us. And I'm gonna read it, exactly. Okay, get ready. And here's what it says. Scripture says, the Lord will give you the desires of your heart, but what happens when he doesn't, and I'm gonna to go to Amy, she's my pastor, and I've said this to her too, so. Well, I actually hear this a lot, and, and after a while, it's just kinda of like, nah, 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 nah. like, it seems so whiny at times. Well, I didn't get the desires of my heart, and God didn't answer my prayer when he said this, and blah, 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 blah. All, and you're just like, wait, does he love you? Do you trust him? Does he know what's best for you? Now, on a real spiritual mat, or let's say you're believing God for your health. Let's say you're believing God for finances. You're believing God for your marriage. You're believing God for your kids. You actually have scriptural promises from God concerning that situation. But like, oh, I didn't get the new car. I didn't get my bonus. You know, that, that's a little different. But on real heavy life issues, where you have scriptural promises, I would encourage you with the scripture in Hebrews 4, let us hold fast to the confession or the profession of our faith right. without wavering. Mm -hmm. So you hang on to those scriptures concerning whatever is going on in your life and you believe them, you think about them, you meditate on them, you chew on them, you speak them and you believe God for them and you hold fast right. without wavering right. because God is faithful to his word. Right, oh, mm -hmm. it's hard. You talked about this in the promo. Oh yes, that's true, I did and I, you do see it and I'm with Amy, it's so hard when you're discouraged and don't get the desires of your heart and you know, the script, Right before that, it says, delight yourself in the Lord. Well, many of these people may be delighting in the Lord and they're still not getting the desires. And if God gave me everything I wanted, I'd be a mess. Uh, so true. Okay, so sometimes, as Amy says, he does know best. Mm -hmm. And Jesus also says, as Amy said, don't fret about it. Mm -hmm. Don't fret, seek 
first the kingdom. Put your hand to the plow, what God gave you right in front of you to do. Yes. And the future is in his hands. And that's how I feel it. Do whatever responsibility God is giving you right at the moment, mm -hmm. at the season. Seek his kingdom first. Be in church. Be with God's people. Do your job right. well, successfully. Be a good friend. Do those things that God has called you to do and don't worry about the things that you don't have. Wow, that's good. That's hard though when you have something that's planted deeply in your heart. I mean, I tell people in, in regard to this scripture, God is not a, a genie. It's not a magic right. uh, lamp that you go like right. this. I, right. I, because yeah. this is a scripture that I hold on to. Because when you have a desire in your heart, when you're living for Him, yes. your heart's desires are what He put in there. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I believe that. That. So when it doesn't transpire the way you are hoping and praying for, it's really tough. But I love, Amy, what you're saying, that don't waver. Mm -hmm. keep, keep to the plow. Mm -hmm. Put the kingdom first mm -hmm. and stay the course. It's tough. And you know, one thing, like my friends and I, I think especially like my generation, so you're waiting on a husband or a spouse yes. or different things. But one thing we always say is there's protection in the rejection. And sometimes when God closes oh. a door, it's good. Like God opens Absolutely. doors and yes. God closes doors. And yes. I think the more we grow closer to Jesus and we walk in our journey and our faith, we, he grows us up a little bit. And he's like, some doors I'm going to close. And yeah. I looking back, I'm like, well, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Like I was, right. had my desire of my heart was I was good. I thought I was going to marry this man. God closed the door. Thank you, Jesus. Looking back because I probably would be divorced. Seriously. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes you have to like the desires of our heart. If it doesn't align with his will, okay. right. then it's just right. not going to happen. Right. And sometimes so it's, it's like you just have to be like, okay, God. And I think that's why it's so important to like surrender and be like, all right, Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. like this is a desire, but I'm surrendering it to you. And if it doesn't align with your will, then I'm going to say, okay, yes, that's fine. And be okay because you're a good, good God. Right. Here's right. the thing. God has a complete view, whereas we have a point of view. I oh, mean, that's good God, point. he sees yesterday, he sees today, and he sees tomorrow. Wouldn't you much rather trust, trust. a God that is all seeing and all knowing than me who only can see one point of view, yes, I would rather trust an all-knowing, all-seeing God. It just makes sense to trust God and also who loves you so deeply and unconditionally. It just makes sense to trust God. It's not easy. It's, it, no one says that it's easy, but that is the thing that we should do is just put our trust in God. And in the doing that, we shouldn't put are other things on hold. Yes. We should not put, right. when we're waiting, when we're yes. trusting right. in this right. scripture right. and we're holding fast, right. that does not mean, holding fast does not mean put our uh, ministries on hold, right. put our life on hold. Our dreams. Our, our it does hopes. not mean to put right. all of those things right. on hold. We should be serving the Lord. We yes. should be living out our calling and believing and trusting and following what the Lord has called us for. Wow, yeah. wow. So stay fast, my friends, my friends who are dreaming. Stay fast, hold tight, and you know who you are. Mwah. Okay, I'm going to the next question because it's a good one too. Have we lost the practice of rest in our fast moving society? I have to read this because this is a big question. Can we take the luxury of slowing down? How do we rest in the Lord? Mm -hmm. Roxanne, you're the busiest person oh, I yeah, know. I jumped at this question because I don't know what rest is. I think on my tombstone, <laughs> it's gonna say, she's finally resting. resting. <laughs> here, lay down, lay down. Yeah, lay down, lay down. You know, uh, Someone recently said a quote from St. Augustine, Lord, our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. Okay. And we do, I think we were created with restless hearts because until we find that place in God of contentment that he's going to take care of it, he's going to work things out, we are restless. We want to do this. We want to achieve certain things. And he, as you have said in the other side, we are designed to create, to do, to do the things that even God has done in our humanness and what he's given us to do. So I say this to people, first figure out 
what the Lord wants you to do. And don't get distracted by all the other things you think you need to do. For example, the kids, they got to be in dance, they've got to be in soccer, they've got to mm -hmm. be in a hundred things. Yeah. Too but many things. what <laughs> is that thing? Is it music? Yeah. Is it, what is that thing, that purpose that God has placed in that child's heart, in my heart? Be excellent, be good at those several things instead of searching so many different avenues and being distracted by so many different I things. I like that, I like that. You're a busy bee, yeah. Amy. Well, one of the scriptures says that we labor to enter into this rest. Mm. You actually have to kind of work to enter into the rest of God. Uh, because there are so many distractions and life is so busy. But I like one of the guests we had here in the, in, at Quarterstone and she talked about sacred rest and the different kinds of rest are. Sometimes we think if we just take a nap that we'll be okay. Well, you might need a social rest. You might need a break from people. You might need a, a, a creative rest. You're creating all the time. And so there's, there's different kinds of rest that we need. And so it, may, it might not just be physical. It might be another kind of rest. I just want peace. I think rest to me is peace. Corey, do you rest? I take a Sunday afternoon nap. Does that count as rest? <laughs> no. Those are the best. Really. I mean, that's nice, but no. no. I mean, rest. honestly, I, I used to be better. I think that this has really taken away from people's restfulness. Because I, I, it used to be that you'd sit in like the doctor's office and you'd just kind of like sit there Chill. and yeah, flip through a magazine. But now You're it's right. every That's spare moment point. I feel like is filled with this mm -hmm. for the kids, for me, for every random person, even standing in an elevator, sitting in your car. It, there's those spare moments are now always filled I have found with the phone and it's changed our society mm -hmm. and it's filled those moments that used to be restful with this and I think it's not a good thing right I don't either and I think this show goes so fast that I don't have time to ask Miss Sydney if she rests, so rest. And I'm gonna wrap this up. We'll be right back to wrap this up. close with a scripture that's very near and dear to my heart. I'm going to tell you why. Over 40 years ago, when I was a young Christian, I experienced a medical difficulty. And when I first learned of it, I was filled with anxiety and fear. And what did I do? I ran to my Bible, flung it open. And this scripture is what I read. Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord is everlasting strength. Well, the medical issue resolved uh, uh, many years later, uh, but how do we walk through and achieve perfect peace? And I also read in Isaiah and I learned that 700 years before Christ was born, he prophesied of Christ's crucifixion. He said we were, he was pierced for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. So to achieve that perfect peace, accept the finished work of Christ on the cross. And as we end each show, we also say this, as iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a woman sharpen the other. Roxanne's words helps my heart. We'll see you next time. We are Sister to Sister. Mm -hmm.